Uh, what's this recording for? If you don't mind, I mean, we're just trying to bring awareness to the problems out here at Portland and um, trying to get more resources for people like you. And the more we show people, the more resources will be available. So what's going on with you, man? You, you all right? You sick? Yeah. Huh? Uh, what's up with the foil down there? Is that, is that the smoke fentanyl with? Yeah, I mean, I can see where it's been burned here on foil. And then yeah. that's, and you got your, um, you got your straw there to suck it out of there. Well, it's just the way you, I don't even know if you need a straw. I mean, you just yeah. need it. You okay down there? Yeah, I smell fentanyl. Huh? You ever think about getting some help? So where here in Portland do you think the drug problem is the worst in this part of the city? It's everywhere? Please do not hang up. This is the 911 emergency line. Right. The call taker will be with you as soon as possible. Right. Are you administering PCPR? He did, he did uh, drug right. Come on, Johnny. Come on, Johnny. Wait, so what did he do? Yeah. Did he hit him with Narcan? Johnny. 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 Come on, come on, Where are we at? Uh, we're on the corner of 6th and what street is this? 6th and Gleason. Yeah, um, on 6th and Gleason we have a medical emergency. A man has OD'd. He's gotten two doses of Narcom. They don't have any more and he still needs more. Thank you. And was this accidental or intentional? Um, from the fentanyl smoking. Yeah. He can't stand up. Uh, yeah. There he goes. Up. Okay. Yeah. He's, Just he's I have to ask, is he violent? No, actually, he's moving around now. I think to look at a problem, you have to find the roots of it. And it's sad to see. You don't know where these drugs are coming from. Um, who's bringing them in to Portland? Who's where they're coming from? Who's allowing it? And I think decriminalizing it is just saying, hey, go ahead, you know, and I, I understand the fact that they say we're going to get you help instead of arrest you, which is cool, but how much help are they doing, you know? It's more like probably take you in and say, hey, there's this person that can help you, and they're just like, I don't care, I'm just going to go out and do it again. And you're familiar, obviously, with the open drug use out here. I, 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 it was my first experience uh, seeing an environment like this uh, arriving in the Vancouver, Portland area. Um, I'm familiar with it, yes. Yeah, and and what what you use some drugs? What what drugs do you like to use? I, I hate to say it. I'm I'm, I'm an addict myself. I have been for, for about 31 years in, in uh, I, I, methamphetamine, alcohol, and marijuana. So um, we're out here talking to people about drugs um, on the streets, and obviously you just use some over there. Um, what, what is your drug of choice? Uh, fentanyl. Fentanyl. Uh, meth. Okay, is that what you just smoked there? Is fentanyl or? Uh, that was meth. Uh, meth. Yeah. I, they actually just uh, sold and ran out of uh, Fetty. Okay, all right. So th is fentanyl the drug of choice for you? Absolutely. Okay, all it's right. A, it's a hard one. The fentanyl is a really suspicious and uh, kind of like, I question like where and why this drug is even, even around because when I tried it, it didn't do anything for me. All it does is get you sick and then you want to go back to it again because you're so sick you need the fentanyl and you feel good now because you took the fentanyl to make you not sick anymore. Are you just like trying to get people before using it and stuff like that? Yeah, and, you know, kind of bring awareness to society that you know, yeah. there's people out there. That I don't really want to use it, but I'm like um, I'm 54 years old and I've got a really bad sciatic nerve that's pinched off and I cannot hardly walk if. Um, um, it's just a microphone. Okay. Yeah. I can't. Um, I'm using it for medical, for like self-medicating. Yeah. I can't drink alcohol anymore because, of course, I drank as a teenager, you know, in school and stuff, and my liver doesn't like that. So. Okay. Um, but I would really prefer not to use it. I do think that the drug problem is worse than it has been before. Um, I think that the idea of of getting people help when they're addicted to drugs is really important. Um, and I love that idea, um, but I think that it's, it's hard to say that it hasn't made things 
more challenging for our city. Um, and that includes the folks that are ravaged by this, what I consider a disease. You know, they are, you know, addiction is certainly a disease. And, and But when it comes to drug use, you know, I, I contacted over the course of my career lots of people who are addicted to drugs, whatever, whether it's heroin or methamphetamine or cocaine or whatever. Um, and when I would contact somebody that had gotten clean, almost without exception, what they told me was, I got clean because I got tired of being arrested. Yeah. Have you thought about seeking, you know, help? You know, I, you know, I need to. I do know that um, clinically methamphetamine is not a drug that has a withdrawal period. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, it was, uh, if you don't put it in, you don't have to take it out. That's a hard, hard school way that I learned from the years that I do have an NA. I didn't fall back into my addiction until I arrived in the open community. Oh, wow. Uh, where, 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 you know, I go to a canning line, you know, canning line, the can redemption places. Yeah. Seven of us are in line, and five of them are standing up sleeping because they just smoked what they call blue, the fentanyl, or, or the um, heroin. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, have you thought about seeking help to get you, you know, rehabbed? And yeah, so I've uh, done two separate um, trials, one at Hooper and then uh, one at Fora. I lasted four days and uh, three days, and then uh, I got ar been arrested three times to where I was in there for about three days. Um, but one of the one of the times was uh, four days, about 95 hours. But I was so sick that I couldn't leave jail, so I had to get uh, wheelchair to the front, and uh, ambulance picked me up, took me to the hospital. Um, IV uh, uh, hydration, because I was so dehydrated from not eating or drinking anything for four days, so. Okay. Could have almost died there. Uh, right. I mean, have you given up, or? No, no, absolutely okay. not. Um, I have plans to get it together. I guess I'm kind of just going through a little, I don't know, what do you call it, a midlife crisis, I guess you could say. And so are you in, like, one of those 10, uh, 10, no. 11 step programs, or what do you call it? I'm in the Central City Concern uh, drug, drug Treatment Program. Okay, and so they give you housing with it as well. Oh, good. So they give me an apartment, and uh, they uh, I, I go to a group class for an hour and a half, Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm supposed to also be going to meetings, like AA and NA meetings. Okay, so they're helping you build a foundation so you can yeah. carry on a productive life. That's it's awesome. really a great program because, uh, and like, I encourage people out here to go do it because because really they provide everything that you could possibly need to get your life back together, right? They don't even let you work for the first 90 days. They just want you to get yourself together mentally. Yeah, so have you thought about seeking help? Um, um, yeah, I did, and it was like a little too much. You know, I didn't really feel that it was, um, I think that help with the Fetty with individuals should be just that. Uh, more, what's the word for it, individualized, because everybody's situation is is different with using, some people just use it just to use drugs, yeah. you know, and um, I have never been that type of a drug user before, I just like marijuana, <laughs> you know, but I don't have an ID to get into the stores, so. As police officers, we don't take a political viewpoint, and, and I haven't taken one on this measure, because we utilize the tools that the, the public gives us in order to address problems. And I think it's really up to the public to decide, is this working or is it not? And if the public thinks that this is the right policy and the way to go, then we will do our best with the tools that we have to help address the problem. I, I do wish uh, Portland was not so accepting. And I know it's been changed in the, in the ordinance that it's now illegal to, to get high publicly where it was acceptable, you know, non-disciplinary or what have you. I do wish that didn't exist. I think that measure attracts, 110, yeah. That attracts people. Yeah, that's We already exactly. got what we got, and I'm one of them. I'm no saint. Yep. But for anyone new, man, we, 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 you know, I know it would be such an impact for, you know, the, the, the jails, the laws, the paperwork, the, the, the judges, the, you know, everything would just compounding impact. But look at this city, it's got millions, it must have millions of dollars going through Central City Concern and, and other programs like that. 
monthly. You know, it's just, the, the real estate they have in this city for, for those concerns and, and the housing opportunities, those are beautiful. They're, they're great in their design, but there's no foundation to keep the people in them. So what do you feel led you to using drugs? Uh, well, they're fun once in a while. Uh, no, um, I don't know. Uh, I had a good childhood, a good upbringing, everything was, you know, I didn't have an oh, poor me story. Um, but uh, no, I just started with, you know, little things, cigarettes, weed, you know, so drinking on the weekends and then led to meth. And then, uh, honestly, I had bad knees and uh, shoulder from playing baseball uh, for a long time. So I was overprescribed. Uh, I think I was overprescribed anyway, uh, you know, Oxycontin for a long time. Okay. And then uh, the pain management took that away, and then I switched to heroin. Uh, and then uh, I got clean off of that for eight years. And I had eight years clean, and then I relapsed and uh, with these blues or whatever, and then I turned into fentanyl, or pure fentanyl anyway. Do you think the uh, decriminalization of drugs has helped you or made, made things worse for you? Honestly, the decriminalization of drugs is the only way to go. I mean, fighting it's, uh, you know, fighting a losing battle. Uh, it's going to be here no matter what. Um, you know what I mean? So as long as we can help it move it along rather than fight it, you know, uh, I think that's, uh, that's the best way. Okay, so there's a, there's a line of bad, good and evil on there. I think, I think that there's people that really believe decriminalizing it would um, make it to where they're not. See, the thing is, is they're not trying to punish the users. They're trying to punish the dealers. Okay, so that was, that was the idea behind that, right? But then what happened was is it, it opened up the gates for people just to be on the streets. But the thing is, is these people would be doing that anyway. They would just be doing it in a trap house or somewhere else. So what, what, what do you think it's going to take to get you to stop using fentanyl? Some permanent housing. Permanent housing? <laughs> yeah, because then you get, people seem to get caught up in depression. Yeah. You know, and um, I do think, think that I suffer from some of that mm -hmm. uh, with family and stuff. I can't find my children and I think bad things have happened and it's really hard to cope with. Okay. Yeah. So, so how long uh, have you been actually using fentanyl? Um, does that include those blue pills too? Yeah. 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 Maybe a year. A year? Yeah, yeah. Off and on. You know the average lifespan of using fentanyl is a maximum of two years. Really, people mean within two years, then if yeah, they use yeah, it for they, they end up ODing and dying before they get any help. Oh wow! Um, and also, the, the fentanyl nowadays, it actually starts eating your skin. Yeah. And there, right it's, there. It's staff. Yeah, and that's yeah. what I have to go to the. Yeah, and that's part of the usage. Is it's going to get eventually? It's going to go septic. And it, I already and did it, that septic too. I was in the hospital on IV antibiotics, and so. Yeah. It's really just a vicious cycle. Right, and it's basically hijacked your life. Yeah. To where you think you need it. Yeah, um, Hijack that's a very good word. Yeah. yeah, hijacked a person's life, for real. That's. It's important to remember that the police are not the solution to every problem. Um, you can't arrest your way out of a drug problem. And there needs to be other services and other um, groups that come together to help solve the problem. A lot of times the police are kind of the last line of defense when, when other things that are supposed to be responsible for the care of the public, when those things have failed someone, well, oftentimes it kind of falls on the police. And we don't think that's right any more than anyone else does. You know, we think that people should be getting the help before it gets to the point that the police are getting called on them. Um, I am certainly not a public policy expert, so I'm not saying that that should happen in any specific way or specific, I'm not blaming anybody specific. I'm just saying as a community, you know, we need to look at, is there anything upstream that we could be doing that keeps it from happening that the police have to get involved? Because when we get a call, we have to go for the most part, right? I mean, um, it's gotten, pretty bad when the police are involved, uh, almost without exception. Well, personally, I hope to see you stop, you know, because I know there's a better life for you and the rest of the people out here using. I just think it's difficult to get removed off the drugs when they hijack your life.
I think uh, a couple of things that the community needs to do, and this will be hard and it would suck, and, it, and it's going to turn a lot of heads. We need to get rid of the needle exchange, and we need to make a mark out of we now no longer accept you visually being seen getting on publicly. Agreed. And that mark is <laughs> get the first 60 people, put them, put them in jail, then put them in jail. Right. Give them their three, five, three, three, five, seven days, whatever it is. Do it. That expense right there, we'll, 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 we'll just. Yeah, got to start somewhere. Be worth it. Be right. worth it. Everybody's got their work cut out for us, whether it's uh, us as uh, the uh, users, I guess, or normies, as I call people like uh, that, that person there, a normal person. Uh, we live in like a kind of a different world than normal people do. So, yeah. At least I think so. Okay. Well, we appreciate you talking. Yeah, no problem, to us. man. And uh, we wish you the best. Yeah, you too. All right. And, um, hopefully, you can find a way to transition to a better way of. I, I'm, I'm not really looking for a better way this is just the way right now you know what i mean yeah. but uh i'm having fun okay well, as <laughs> have long a good one man fun. take care yeah thanks and then uh, just one more quick question sure how long in, of a time period did you actually use drugs to get you to the point where you had to seek help well i it really wasn't the drugs it was being homeless uh, being homeless i was homeless for three months and okay and that was really hard Okay, so that's what led you into the yeah. drugs, and then finally... Uh, because I used to be like in a middle, upper class financial bracket, and I used to have a good, a, what I thought was a good life, and I had everything as far as financially I was set, you know? And so um, coming into the homeless world was just... At first it was cool because it was the summer, right? And then it just started getting worse and worse, and so I, I just couldn't stand being homeless anymore. And so uh, giving up the drugs was just a super easy not even a question but i ask a lot of people you want to go to hooper and get free housing and they're like i'm not ready to get off the drug chip is there anything else you'd like to add um i don't think so except for i would hope that everybody gets off the fentanyl you Me know too. because then there's some nice kids over there and it's really sad to see them like that too yeah my take is these people are people. These were once kids in a home and had toys that they played with their parents, you know? And now they're on the streets playing with needles. And I think that's a huge problem that's totally misheard, misunderstood, and should be looked at deeper. Um, right, yeah, nobody in the fifth grade when the teacher asked what you're gonna be when you grow up, no one raised their hand and said I was gonna be a drug addict. Nobody, it's just um, yet here pains they are you. Important. You know, with a huge problem.